come back. Your dreams were your ticket home. Hello and welcome to the stream. This pre-stream powder there was uh, a very bad rendition of the theme song from Welcome Back Cotter. Uh, and uh, except I replaced the word Cotter with streamer. Uh, that is probably some of the worst non-singing you will hear. Okay, so let's go, let's go ahead and we're going to basically continue what we were doing before, so uh, I'm not even going to bring up the readme.stream, which is never accurate to begin with. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, modifying BC Moon Occult Star, so instead of just the moon doing the occulting, uh, any star can do the occulting. Uh, by the way, I have changed the audio setup slightly, so hopefully I'm a little bit louder and can be heard better over the background noise of a large swarm of bees that cr continuously surround me either because I'm as sweet as honey or because uh, I am, have some sort of magnetic attraction to bees. Okay, or not to bees, that, that is the question. Okay, so let's go ahead and over here. Uh, the position we're wanting gonna get, we're want, the position we are wa wanting to get, uh, the moon will be the occulter, so we'll replace uh, 301 with occulter. Earth will be the viewer. And it is Pomodoro time, but of course this is the first one, so we're going to skip it. Um, and let me do one other thing here real quick. Okay. And of course the, the Earth is the viewer, so we want to do this. Now the, the other thing we really don't, the, the problem is going to be we need the radius of both the viewer and the occulter. Uh, and we can do that. Um, find radius of viewer and occulter. And unfortunately, it's we, I know we're using BOD VRD, but I don't remember exactly how to do it when we have integers. Uh, and that is because I am stupid. Um, but fortunately, I can look at my older stupidity and see what we're looking for. So let's see. Um, okay. I actually think it's BOD VCD is the one I need this time. Yes, because I am looking at... Um, I am looking at the the um, first parameter is an integer, not a uh, not a string, in this case. So this is what we need. So let's see what we're going to need for this. Um, I guess we're saying r colat. Okay, th those are sorry, those are temporary variables. So what we need is like Earth radius. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, uh, culture radius and viewer radius, and we'll just call them R to confuse things. Um, now the problem, of course, is that there are going to be three of these suckers, uh, because we have triaxial ellipsoids. We're going to use the very first one, the zeroth element uh, of the array as we do, uh, because that's what we do. Um, yeah. Uh, but we do need a place to store, uh, therefore, so we'll call these the occult -er radius, view -er radius, and we will store the uh, the three results in these in these uh, in these variables. So here we will say a culture, and that's three dimension. Oh, and the dimension is basically uh, it's going to be three, but we need to pass it in uh, to make this call happy. And so this will be the, um, oh, you know what? That would be even more clever. A culture z, radii, radius is, is, is. So let's do that. A culture rs, and then same for the viewer. And by the way, I do happen to know that rs is the symbol for rupees. We are not discussing rupees. If you're into rupees, go to some country that uses rupees. I think India is one of them. Okay, and now here we can do, actually, I'm just getting obsessed now with, with declaring stuff only as I use it. Um, uh, culture zero and the viewer radius will be uh, the zeroth value of the array of viewer radiuses. Now, of course, there's a good chance I messed something up here. Um, I will leave these as moon and star pause just to be confusing. Uh, let's see. A culture, da 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 da. 
And the only thing I think we need to change here uh, is we just need to sum the two radii. The occulter R and the viewer R. So if I'm correct, which I'm not, this will give me, this will print out actually every single, um, every single possible, uh, you know, every time that, uh, I guess every time, this won't be that often, because if we use like Mars, for example, Mars only comes around to each star like once every year. So let's see what this does. This should be uh, vaguely interesting. Probably won't work. So that's the first thing. Wow ran without a flaw okay and we will run it incorrectly the viewer will be us earth 399 the occulter i think we will make this uh mars 499 and we will go from 2020 to 2021 and yeah so kind of saw that coming actually um i think there's a way to do it where i can use um where I can use numbers for the the input, um, or maybe not. Mm. Mm. That's not cool. I know we had to deal with this earlier. Um. Okay, so I think what we had to do there is we actually have to keep them as strings, and that does not seem correct. Let's let's take a quick look here. Let's see what BOD VCDC. There is one function that does what we want, uh, but it's not that one. I, well, it's one of these damn functions that does what we want. Turn double precision values from spice int o. Oh no, that's a body ID. Mm. Body ID code. Um, this I think is actually mistaken in in, in spice. I mean, we're, we we have to deal with it, but um, um, I think this is actually a problem. This is actually a Body 499 radar, because 499, I'm pretty sure, is uh, Mars. Yeah. So there really should be a body Mars radii, but there isn't. And I remember I had to work around this before. Um, it's either VRD or VAR. I don't remember which one. So this one, uh, you can put in uh, the, the value as a string. Um... And then you can get um, instead of as a as an integer, and the final one I think is beyond useless. Um, oh, actually, this routine is deprecated, so we don't use it. Okay, so I I did run into this before. Um, so if what I'm what I'm thinking is correct. We should probably use the same method we used for uh, BC occultations. Just copy that code in here uh, to the extent that it's relevant. Um, da -da -da. Yeah, and here we basically need to say spice, because this really is um, a string, We so we don't convert it to an integer right away. Um, and we don't do that with this one either. So we just get these raw. And then we use this little... Yeah, here we are. Um, and in our case, we're only doing two of them, but, you know, whatever. Convert viewer a culture into NAFE IDs with error checking. Um, so bot two C two the moon here will be the view doesn't really matter but but you know uh, viewer ID found and to do this we do need our our variables 
Um, we have up here somewhere. Okay. Uh, so we'll declare them here. Uh, culture, da 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 da. Spice int viewer ID. And we might as well a culture ID. And then we want spice boolean found, which we'll reuse because we don't really care about the value. I mean, we do, but we're, we're only going to use it like very briefly. Okay. So bot s to c, if not found, print f um, viewer not found, and that'll be the viewer. Then we'll do the same thing for uh, the um, occulter. And the occulter ID, which we have fortunately defined. And we'll say occulter not found. And I think you can still use numbers for these, uh, but for some reason it works now and when it doesn't work otherwise. So, um, okay. So now we need the, uh, da -da -da -da, the radii of the uh, occultor which I guess is now going to be a culture, not ID, ID, but just ID. Um, and do I care that... Yeah, I, I'm okay with changing every... Um, I need to basically change a culture and viewer in the lower, uh, the rest of the function too, but that's okay because I have to do that anyway. Um, so a culture, viewer... Da, 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 da. Oh, I actually did change it, didn't I? Um, in fact, is there any place where I use 399 still? No. 301? No. A Coulter. ID, ID, ID. Da, da. Oh, here it is. We do need to say a Coulter ID, uh, viewer ID, and then um, I think the rest of this should actually work. Let's find out. Um, well, let's see if it'll actually compile even. Compiled? Uh, not cool. So if I said Mars here, would this be okay? Hmm. Okay. So something is not quite doing what we want. Um... Mention a cult RS. Okay, that's going further than we need it. Um, actually, this should have. Okay, so it didn't crash here in a culture found. Um, okay. So this really should assign the viewer ID and the occulter ID. And. Oh, here, right, 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 bod vc, we need to use the version now that is um, for the string variables, not the bod vcd, which is uh, bod vrd, I think. Yeah, so let's get one of these suckers, and we just want to cut, cut and paste, because I don't know how to code myself, obviously. Um, so this will be... It doesn't really matter, but I mean, um, the viewer, radii, three dimensions, and put it into viewer radiuses. And this will be the same thing, but for the occulter. Um, okay, so now this will probably fail. In fact, this may not even compile, but let's see what happens. Always exciting. Okay, compiled. Mm -hmm. Okay, now something tells me that I've had to deal with this before. But before we do that, let's just go Earth Mars and see if that works. Um, okay didn't ask you for body 399 radii. Oh, and I guess we can also get rid of these uh, constants that no longer apply. Uh, the max one we do kind of want, though. Um, okay. So this is found. This is found. 
viewer. Let me do another make, I guess, just to... I, I thought I'd made it before, but let's make sure. Okay, that looks like it made fine. Yeah, that's not looking too good. So, BODVRD, one of these failed. Um, and I guess we're going to try to figure out which one and why. Okay. Um, viewer, a culture, both of these are strings. Um, we're asking for the array die, and we're, so this is not, this should not be 399. In fact, there should be no place, okay, where, let's see. Mm. All right, well, the only one way to find out, well, there's plenty of ways to find out, but this is one of them. It's a debug. A uh, viewer and a culture. Maybe I did something wrong. Okay, wow, this one sheet is really slowing down. Stand by for nope. I'm going to go ahead and shut down Stellarium. I think that might be a little bit too much for it. I really shouldn't have to do this, but... Is there anything we really should have to do in life? I mean, everything should just be automatic. That was me being pretending poetic. Earth, Mars. Okay. How have I done this before? Oh, you know what? Maybe. Let me check something. I did. I did do the. Um, yeah, that's that's the problem. I need to load the um, kernels first, and I bet you anything I could have gotten away without even doing. Um, Yeah, I bet you I, I didn't even need to do the um, conversion to names. I think that was the, the bigger problem there. Okay, now, there we go. Oh. Um, oh, fudge. Why am I fudge? This is fudgy because... Actually, that shouldn't be that fudgy. Okay. The only thing I can think of is that I'm using a kernel that overrides the default kernel. Let me see what happens if I do just 2000 to 2001. Um, now the other option is I can just use 4, which is the Mars Berry Center. Um, oh, actually, let me go ahead and do 399, 499 here. Yeah. Let me do just four here. This won't work, though. Yeah, because four is the the point that is the center of Mars and its moons. Um, it is not the... Uh, it is not Mars itself. But this is kind of worrisome, because I'm pretty sure we do have Mars um, itself, 499. We do need a special... We do need... Um, Let's read the comment here. We do. We actually do need a, a kernel for this, but this one should do it. Um, from linked. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So this should actually be going from 1900 to 2100. So this this should be. And let's make sure it's actually in there. Although if it's not will be very... Oh, fudge. Yeah, we actually now want to say BC Max Kern. Um, because we don't have... Mar we don't necessarily have Mars 97 in the old kernel. Uh, and I shouldn't even have... Oh, no, I do need to re recompile. Yay! And this should be fairly... I'll just pause until I figure out what it's supposed to be fairly. Okay. All right, so the closest we get Mars gets to being... Um, to, a, to occulting a star in this in this year is it's going to be nine times the, the uh, angular diameter of Mars. Um, not very exciting, but... 
least we can look so May 15th 2020 let's let's see if we're even like in the ballpark here Let me see if I can actually look at what's from here. There we go. Okay. So it's going to be May the 20th. I think. I actually forgot already. Mars. And let's make sure I've got the time right, the date right, all this other bullshit right. Um, May 15th um, is when that was going to happen. Yeah, let's at this, this, this I might need to do something about at some point. Uh, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Well, that actually came out kind of nicely. So what we're saying is this is going to get within nine radii of, of Mars radii, and it's almost there actually. Uh, so let's 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 uh, well let's just do this. Uh, let's just say 22. Nope, wrong way. Um, I'm going to skip this Pomodoro uh, just for fun, uh, but the next one I won't probably. Okay, so this is actually you know fairly accurate here. We're going to get within. Um, so we're not going to hit 42 Aquarii, uh, which I'm going to double check to make sure that is the correct star, because otherwise it's a gr tremendous coincidence, uh, which would be weird. So we said it's going to be star number this in the uh, HYG catalog, and that is 42 Aquarii. You go, girl. Um, and the, the, um, well, let's see how close we can get this. Let's, let's, this is a waste of time, but remember, everything is a waste of time. Okay, so it is going to pass considerably north of, um, of the star. I don't, I don't think we're getting any closer than that. Now, if, as to whether or not that is nine radii, well, let's actually figure something out here. I think we can actually get it a little bit closer using, okay. So our field of view is 0 0.05, Mars is angular diameter, uh, it's the parallactic angle. Um, so let's see, supergalactic ecliptic obliquity, rise, tet, transit. Apparent diameter is 8.34 seconds. Um, that's not really helpful because this is not in seconds. Give me the field of view in seconds, you monkeys. Oh, they don't want to do that. All right. Now, in theory, depending on where we are on the Earth, we can change this, but I get the feeling the change is going to be very, very minimal. So, as we go further north, we can push this. We can push Mars. It's actually surprising that we can notice it. If we go beyond 90 degrees, we can't do anything, and the latitude should not make too much of a difference. Um, that has a very minor difference on... Okay. So even with this sort of very limited example, we are seeing that we're getting something that is at least theoretically accurate or, you know, within believability reasons. Um, so let's go ahead and now again, we're going to do this wrong, as we always do. Let's go ahead and look at it for the next 30 years. And eventually we're going to have it only report things that are actual occultations. We're not going to have it report everything like it's doing now. Uh, so let's see what this does. And what this does is it hangs forever because um, we're actually looking at 10 days at a time. I'm actually somewhat surprised. This should not really be this slow. And the, I'm wondering if it's just the printing that's causing this to be slow, which obviously would be very stupid. But anyway. Um, so this is fun. Let's just watch this run for a bit. Um, really should not happen that often because we are actually um, 
Mars will only get close to a given star. The only the only real issue here is going to be retrograde motion. Let me go ahead and put that in as a as a kind of a warning. Um, okay. Oh, cool. Uh, retrograde motion to do. Um, choose good uh, skip value based on um, ah, uh, based on input object e.g. moon equals 10 days mars equals like 100 days maybe something like that so we really don't we shouldn't have to go through like day by day for mars except we maybe do because of its you know retrograde motion but something something along this nature where we can actually choose uh, choose what we're looking at here so let's see here we have a uh, a six coming in on uh, here, November 16, 2027. Now, I'm actually not that interested in that. Um, okay, let's sort of find one where it actually does happen. Um, so let's say Venus decides to occult anything. Probably not. Venus is pretty boring. And I guess we can bump... Well, the 10 days is actually not a bad amount of time. Okay, so... So according to this, Venus will get within 3.4 Venus... Whew, angular widths of something... On... Uh, January... Oh, so we missed it. January 28th of this year. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, a lot of this is me just wasting time because I enjoy looking at these things. And I realize it's a simulation, which makes it even worse. Um, obviously, we could be quite a bit more efficient if we chose to, but I don't. Okay, so 128, we're at the Earth's North Pole. I am having trouble seeing the star that it's going to be anywhere close to. But, let's see. Uh, maybe... That's 129 at noon uh, GMT, and this was at, come on, 5 in the morning on the 28th, so it's the other direction that we need to be going. And obviously there's a sort of a, sort of an obvious candidate here uh, as we go further. Oh, cool, Neptune. Yeah, that's not bad, actually. Um, so not quite there. We're not, we're not quite there. Um, I think we can actually move a little bit to the south and get ourselves a little bit of a better view here. Uh, so, because right now we're at the Earth's North Pole. Um, oddly enough, that's not having much of an effect. Maybe we can do something with the... I'm going to refer to us down to the equator, roughly. Um, okay. Now this, let's see if this has an effect. And I mean, you wouldn't really necessarily expect it to. Okay. Um, and now we should be able to just go minute by minute. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, so I mean, I'm going to believe that's that's pretty close. Um, so now... Now let's go. Well, uh, let's let's go. Uh, let's go do Jupiter real quick. But then there's something else we want to do that's vaguely interesting. Jupiter, of course, being the fifth planet, is 599. Let's see how close Jupiter gets to a, uh, any star. Okay, and that's 12 Jupiter radii. Um. Which is actually kind of sucky. So let's see if we can now... Now we can actually look at Jupiter's moons. Um, oddly enough, this number might be way bigger because Jupiter's moons have a much smaller angular diameter. Um, and obviously, if we're going to be looking at Jupiter's moons, we need to be a little bit better because we don't have to look all the time. Uh, we only have to look when Jupiter is reasonably close to a given star uh, that we care. But let's just see how close Io gets. Because Io can be pretty far... 116.
So not not looking too good there. Okay. Um, hoping to find one of the moons gets like somewhat close to a star. Um, and by the way, you do notice that this is the uh, the same star at about the same time. Not surprising. Because when Jupiter comes close, its other moons come close too. Yeah, not great. Uh, not great at all. All right, let's do this one. Of course, we could do. There's tons of these to do. Um, so the um, so the skip time that we'll be able to use will probably be half the length of the retrograde period of whatever we're looking for, as as viewed from. Uh, wherever we're looking. That is a very difficult thing to actually to do. Um, come on, Callisto. I know you can do it for me. Apparently not. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and BC get this because it is somewhat useful. And then... And then, let's see, da-da-da, hang on the arguments. Again, I could subroutine, I, I could put some of this into subroutines, and probably should, actually. Uh, we probably don't need alpha anymore. We do need this. We do want this. Okay. And we do not want the local minimum. We want it to be... We're going to say less than 10, just because I want to get some results out of it for right now. Um, uh, and... I actually I think we can probably... Um, this will be in the middle of the, uh, in, of the occultation. Um, okay, so now this should give us only the close calls, unless I screwed something up, which is, that's like four times in a row that I've had something um, actually run correctly without... Um, Without screwing up. Okay. Oh, wow. So that was... I changed the wrong parameter. Yay, I'm an idiot. Um, so I guess let's look at gfuds uh, real quick. I, I maybe have called the wrong function. Actually, I'm pretty sure I have it, though. Uh, let's see. Relate and then ref val comes immediately after. So it is relate, and we're gonna make this ten, just so we have something a little bit nicer. Um, okay. This is really a lot slower than I want it to be, and it, it kind of worries me. All right, so there are two cases where Venus gets very close to a star in the next year. And this is between, I think we already looked at this case, actually. Um, yeah, about 5 a.m. on January 28th uh, of this year. Um, so I actually, at some point, may want to, um, I can't remember the word, but uh, look to see how fast this program is running and why it is running so slowly. Uh, you can use things like GDB to do that, or you can just do whatever the hell you want with it. So now, let's see if we can find when Saturn has a close call, uh, if at all, with the um, none. How about, <laughs> I'm about to say, I was about to say Uranus, <laughs> Uranus. No. Neptune? Dun dun dun! 
I guess we could say Pluto, but... Yeah. Okay. So good. I'm going to go ahead and, and go ahead and push this into Git. Uh, but slow. And usually for someone who doesn't care that much about slowness, it is unusually slow. So now let's look at the moon. And for the moon, we're going to see quite a few of these. And for the moon, I guess we really do want it to be less than one. Jesus freaking Christ. All right, we get it. And uh, less than one. So these will be true occultations of the moon um, for this year. Um, I really didn't expect there to be that many of them. Um, yeah, actually, I'm a little bit suspicious of this result, so I'll call it tempmoon.txt. There's something that worries me about these results. Um, I, I don't think there are this many occultations coming up in the next year. I mean, we, we found some last night, but they were with 12th magnitude stars. So this, this looks unpromising to me. And very, very slow. And I, I'm, I'm having difficulty understanding why this is slow. I mean, I can check the load here, the pseudo load. It's not that high. Okay. And let's do one, two, three, four. We'll look at the ones with the brightest magnitude, uh, obviously. 2.56. Okay, so this thing thinks that it's going to occult a 2.56 magnitude uh, star on May 8th of this year. I am very suspicious. I'm also forgetting how to do May 8th. Okay, May 8th. And let's find the moon. I mean, the 2.56 magnitude star is Unzoom, unzoom, too much zoom. Now, is that the R2.56 magnitude star? No, it's not. Um, actually, let's see what this 2.5, that is, that is way, way too bright. Um, it's going to be 78580. Um... 8 beta 1 Scorpius. Okay. Now, unless you're actually under the moon, which, which is a possibility, actually. Um, okay. Suspicious. What was the time on that? The moon does move pretty fast through the sky, so the time is actually going to be important. We said 1301. So let's do that. Oh, wow. We may have something. Um, this is a pretty damn, uh, that's a 2.6. Um, yep, that's it. That's the one we're looking for, I think. Let me double check. Mm. 8 beta 1 Scorpius. Oh, actually, sorry, this is actually, um, these are a combination. So it's beta 1 Scorpius, which I think is, uh, it's not really that close, but, um, the moon does have a pretty high parallax. So if we go far enough to the... Nope, I'm going to start from here. 
Oh my god. Oh my god, this might even be at my latitude. Okay, not quite. So it'd be kind of nice to figure out exactly the southern and northern limits of this, um, not to mention the eastern and western limits of where this happens. But it does look like, yeah, we are actually going to get pretty much. Well, now, okay, hang on. Um, yeah, and of course I need to, to tweak the time as well. Um, yeah, that, that, that's looking like it, we might actually have an occultation there. Um, so that's our closest approach. Now all we need to do is go on the map and say if you go far enough north, or east or west, wherever the hell it is you need to go. Oh, come on! <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, I'm sure that if you go far enough west or east, wherever the hell it is you need to go, you can actually get the damn thing to actually occult. But not, apparently, I can't. I mean, you can. All right, it is Pomodoro time. I'll be back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are back. Okay. So even though I haven't been able to quite nail it correctly, I'm pretty sure that this is uh, a, 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 an occultation of Akrab, an 8 beta scorpi. And I guess the question is, does this happen again that was May the 8th this is July 29th um, I mean at this point there's a tendency to believe that it's gonna work <laughs> Wow um, so if you're a crab here I guess the uh, the moon comes and visits you about once a month. I guess because you're pretty much right on the ecliptic. But that is probably one of the brighter stars on the ecliptic there. Okay. Alright, so now let's do something stupid. Uh, again, continuing. Let's see if we can find a case where... Um, well, first let us return home to Albuquerque. Um... And now let's look at the man. Let's look at Mars, actually. Mars. Um, and we could speed this up a little bit. Let's see what if Mars comes close to something, and then let's see if our program uh, will predict that. Now this may not happen. Uh, okay. That's not close enough, though. 
close enough to that one. Um, it's kind of nice that it gets that close to Jupiter, but that's not what we're looking for. Oh! We're not even looking for this one. But do we actually have... Uh, I guess it's not a huge deal, because you, you wouldn't be able to see Pluto anyway. Um, so the fact that Mars is covering it up doesn't really do anything for us. Okay. And then, even past 2021, I want to see if there's something that... Uh, there is an occultation, although we're really, Mars is kind of going into a sort of gloomy area of the, um, of, of the, uh, sphere. Okay, so maybe, yes, yeah, so we're still looking at the stars that are pretty faint, and now we're still in the year 2020, so let's maybe break this a little bit further. Okay. okay, now it's a little bit too fast. Back to now. Now. One, two, three, four, five. So five is probably the fastest we're going to be able to get it and still have um, any hope of... Uh, of seeing a natural occultation. Mars kind of very nicely going in between everything. What's this? Yeah. I probably should have set my magnitude limit or something. So I think it was one, two, three, four, and five because uh, we paused here instead of going to the slow speed. Uh, let's see. And the problem is we're still actually in um, 2020, so this is something we should have spotted. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, I just did something totally wrong. Okay, first things first, we stop. Then we go back. Now this looks like we're getting pretty close here. Um, and again, Mars does not have a huge uh, parallax difference, uh, you know, from where you're viewing it on Earth. That is actually pretty nicely, pretty, pretty close, pretty, pretty close. And that is Iota Capricornus, 4.25. And that looks really... Yeah, unfortunately, I think... Um, nowhere in the world is that actually going to hit. Um, so let's go back over here. crank this up a little bit and 45 nope miss and I guess if I really wanted to, to do this without being stupid I could go over here and turn on uh, planet orbits um, solar system objects show orbits only for selected planets so now we don't even have to, we can just sort of, um, okay, hey, so, yeah, is it only for selected planet? Oh. I don't have a selected planet. Okay. That's the closest I can see it getting is... Alright. Um, we might be coming to the conclusion uh, that... 
that this is not uh, very useful. Let's see what let's see what this gives us. Yeah. Uh, beta Scorpi. I doubt this is going to have anything. Yeah. Um, Kalsky would probably have some. Uh, Kalsky would probably be the closest thing that'll tell us, uh, you know, what kind of occultations we could expect. And I think even he limits it to about, um, I think he limits it to about two months ahead. So let's take a quick look here. Um, um, Mars, and I get the feeling this is not what I, I want the calendar, actually. Um, Uh, duration, one year, um, but I think, okay, lunar occultations, no, um, Earth orbiting satellites, let's see, um, deep sky objects, New. Okay, I actually don't know where. Um, I actually don't know um, what we would call these occultations. Lunar occultations. It's not a lunar. Planetary conjunctions. I guess they would be planetary phenomena. But I'm not really sure, to be honest. Let's find out. So show me the planetary phenomena for the next one year. And ideally just for Mars. Uh, Brighton's Mars. Okay, that's the beginning of spring for Mars if you live on Mars, which is unlikely and can somehow speak English. Um, So, let's see if we have any, okay, oh, damn it. I want Mars to occult something else. Ay, ay, ay. Um... Minus the moon. There we go. Planetary occultations of bright stars. Uh, oh, nice. But he says 3.52. We can do better than that. Let's go ahead and... Um, can we download this? Or is this a... Um, stand by. Uh, is this a uh, free book or not a free book? Um, let's see. This would be something really useful to have, actually. Um, 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 that is not helpful. Le oh, here we are. This might be helpful. Um, all right, very nice. Let's now, of course, predicting something that somebody else is already predicting um, is not useful. Uh, so we'll say Venus 2035 to 2036, but it is a good check against that what we're doing is correct. Um, So, as viewed from Earth, Venus is doing the occultations between the years... I wish I had a brain. And... 2035 and 2036. And we don't need to tee it anywhere, there should only be one result. Or... 
if we're very unlucky, zero result. Oh, fuck. Okay, so that's not good. Um... Mm. Venus. Um. No, I mean, you should have caught that. Mm. I guess we'll try it in 1984, but if that didn't work, we were in trouble. So, yeah, not looking too good. Okay, we'll make a note of this. Someone will hear about this. Should yield results per, and let's go ahead and actually give the, uh, the URL of the PDF file, or whatever the hell it is that we have here. Um... But do not. Okay, so we need to figure out what the hell we're doing wrong here. Um, that we're not getting the, the correct uh, data. Well, actually, hang on. Did I just get rid of Stellarium because I figured it was taking up too much? Yep, I did. And of course, the moment we get rid of it, we need to do it again. We need to run, run it again. And let's see if Stellarium figures this out. Um, November 19th, 1984. Good day. I actually don't remember it that well. I was there. I don't remember it, though. Okay, let's take a look at Venus, or Venus, as they sometimes call it. Um, and Chaos Borealis, I guess? Let's... See what happens. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's going to go right on top of that one. I mean, that is... Ah, uh, that, that, that's gorgeous. I mean... That, we could probably just watch, just watch it go directly over that. Uh, boom. Now, one thing kind of weird about Stellarium is stars are not, are really are points of light, but Stellarium will display them through what's known as a, a diffraction lens, so it makes it look like um, stars are uh, stars are are balls. Now, in theory, once uh, Venus gets in front of any point of this star, the whole thing should wipe itself out, but it doesn't. Unless I'm doing something really, really weirdly wrong, and no. Um, uh, well, maybe. I mean, now we're kind of pushing the limits here. Um, maybe if I cut off the center of the star. Okay, but anyway, no matter what we call it, that is a very, very close conjunction that our uh, that our uh, program is not seeing, and so that is not good at all. Um, and the only thing I can think of is that maybe Venus is about to go into retrograde or something, and so we have. Um, And so we have some sort of weird, somehow it misses this because, it, well, it is part of the retrograde. Um, but that really should not miss that. All right, let me change the, uh, the, uh, the check frequency to one, or to one, one day. Um, and rerun that, but I mean, 
no. Basically, this is just wrong at this point. Okay. So if it does return results now, that means we have a, a very ugly sort of issue here with just with how we tune our variables. Uh, it does take a lot longer to run this way because we are only jumping one day at a time. Um, in fact, it takes forever to run, which is good because we don't have to... If a program takes forever to run, you can never... Pr wow, that didn't work. Okay. So something seriously wrong has, has happened here. Um, I'm sort of curious to know what the hip number of this star is that um, that Venus is occulting. Let's see. Um, Caus Borealis. 90496. Now, if this is not in the uh, HYG catalog, that would be another explanation as to why we didn't see it, but that would be also very bad for completely different reasons. Um, let me... 90496. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, this is the, um, because this is a hip, we have to do it like this. Um, and it's in there. I mean, proper motion maybe, but that's really going to be too, too small to have an effect. Okay, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay. Lots of ways to debug this. Um. This object never rises. Because I'm at this bizarre high latitude. Um, so there are a lot of ways to debug this. I'm not sure if I want to debug this uh, right now. Uh, one way would just be to say whenever you see this star number, or I guess after you'd be this, when uh, when the uh, HYG data catalog number is 90217, uh, and you're, you know, looking for the separation, uh, print that out. But, um, I think maybe we'll just, okay. So from here, we could, in theory, um, yeah. What's a less than five, maybe? And yes, I am obsessed with this. 
even though I get the feeling it would be best to just look at it fresh another time. Uh, oh, here we are, and it's 1.07, so this is not that bad, provided this is the correct interval. Um, Monday, November 19th. Yeah, so this is this is actually not as horrible as I thought. Monday, November 19th. Venus has a um, angular diameter of So let's let's just see how close we can get these suckers together. I probably need to stop time for this. Okay. So, I mean, this, to me, looks like a very small distance compared to Venus's um, diameter. So now I'm wondering if I actually meant to say uh, the separation should be less than two instead of less than one, because that actually might be the criteria we need here. Uh, and if that's the case, um, then I sort of understand what's going on here. And if we're going to do that, we might as well go crazy and put this back to, um, let's give it five days, let's say. And then, dun dun, da da da. -da. This shouldn't take that long. Okay. Interesting. And then the other one that failed. should also yield a similar result. So I, I think I was looking for it within one radius, and I, we want it within one diameter. Unless this fails, in which case I'll change my mind. Oh, wow. So this 1.077344 number seems to pop up a lot, um, by which I mean twice. OK. So that might just have been it. Um, so I guess now we're going to have to check with Mercury in 1940. Yes, just before World War II began. If this is one po oh, okay, so this one actually gets even closer. Um, this one gets us all the way down to within one Mercury radius of the star. Okay, so I'm fairly happy this program is now working. I'm going to go ahead and BC Gitify it. Um, I'm still not really happy about the one versus two thing. I think I need to see why that's happening. Um, I, I guess it is really the diameter that we're interested in, so maybe that's correct, or or maybe, actually, in this routine here, this should be twice the uh, sum of the radii. It should be the sum of the diameters, um, I think. But I'm not 100% confident that's true either. Or there needs to be some other, um, some other formula here. But, but given that once we increase that value to 2, we're getting close, I'm, I'm fairly happy. Uh, not super happy, because apparently... Um, Someone's already uh, listed all of the occultations. Brighter than 3.5, which is um, obviously we want to uh, we want to uh, get fainter stars in there as well being occulted. Um, so, and I think this year it's pretty much a bust. Well, we know it's a bust for Mercury. Uh, well, we know it's a bust for stars that are. Uh, 
3.5 magnitude or brighter. So the only hope here is that we find a star that is, um, you know, fainter than 3.5 magnitude. But um, this is not. This is really taking way, way too long, and it bugs me. I think there there's probably a glitch here somewhere. There's there's something I'm doing extremely redundantly, and if we can get Uranus to um, to, to uh, cover a bright star, that would be fun. And, and we can't. Um, Uranus, of course, moves very slowly. Uh, and yes, I, I, I know it's Uranus. <laughs> and those are just its own moons. What is the, oh, that's Umbriel. Okay. Wow. And if you look at the... Um, the... The, um, the orbit... Wow, nothing even really close to it until we get to over here, and that's in air ice. Okay, so I'm I'm declaring success, even though we have failed. That is the standard way of doing things: declare success when you fail. And I guess it worked, but it wasn't really that exciting. So I guess that's what it is. All right, so now if I can bring up Emacs, there, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to do. Uh, quite a bit of shit, actually. Um, by the way, I did get around to uh, setting my, my clocks. So you'll be happy to know that. Or you won't. Um, oh, yeah, the other thing we wanted to do was maybe get uh, these uh, transcripts uh, indexed by Google. Um, and so that, that sort of took a back burner to trying to figure out what's in the damn streams in the first place before we before we put them up, uh, which I'd still like to do. Um, Beetlejuice, we had an answer for. We got bored with it. We did find a list of NAFE IDs for which Ephemeris is loaded. Um, now actually, that brings up a question. Um, um, body list in BC Max kernel. And I think I'm trying to find what, which one is the, um, yeah. So we could also just do this for, um, as viewed from Earth, what does Ceres uh, occult this year? Uh, and it may be nothing, um, but if we could speed this up, I could run it on my other machine and, and you know, spit out some interesting crap. Run it for once for each of these IDs and see what happens. In some cases, we'll probably get, you know, this ID wasn't defined for these years. Some of these are comets that existed once and no longer exist, so we won't be able to find them. Um, but this is really taking too long, and it's bugging me. Um, ooh. That's not cool. That's also not cool. Wow, for some reason, it doesn't know the radii of um, the second and third, which I think are, I want to say uh, Ceres is the first one, uh, Pallas and Juno may be the second and third one, but I'm probably wrong, there's one, there's, and Vesta it might be the second one actually. Um, so one thing we could do is try to figure out why this is taking so long to do everything, and let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. Um, Yada yada yada. The only thing we call really a lot of times is this. Um, then we convert the pause to lunar position, uh, to, sorry, to <laughs> rectangular coordinates. And then we look at this. I mean, this has to be it. This has to be the thing that gets called a bajillion times uh, and takes forever. Um, I mean, I'm guessing. I, I really can't figure that out, though. Um, is it the reinitialization of... Oh, wait a minute. Is decreasing... 
Uh, less than two. Um, I mean, this could be bad because it's accumulating every time this happens. However, since it never happens, this shouldn't really be an issue. Uh, one way to do this, to see if it is something that's an accumulation error, uh, is to do this. And if this gets slower as time goes on, we know there's some sort of accumulation problem. So let's see if that's the case. And I'm going to be whimsical and apply it on something I know doesn't actually work. That... I really can't tell. It doesn't seem to be getting any slower with any with the given stars. There are a lot of stars. I mean, I think there's like 2,800 something. Um, whoa! Unless that's all of them. Okay, so there's a big gap after 2140. But I don't know if that's um, garbage collection or something. All right, so let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Um, the for loop, we get the data. We say find out where it is. I guess we could put a. Um, a beginning and end here to see how fast this goes. I get the feeling that's not the right way to do it, though. Um, what's kind of weird here is... Um, We don't reset result after each one of these, which is kind of weird, actually. Um, and CN fine is doesn't actually get changed, I don't think. Because um, CN fine is the confinement window, and that is constant because that gets set way out here. Um, right there. It doesn't look like it does, but it does. So the question is, okay, so we do this, we get the results, we print out the results, and now should we... and then we go through the next loop. So should we over here wipe out the results to be empty? And I know I've done that before for one of these things. Uh, I don't remember where, but... Um, and I actually haven't sent someone an email about this, too. There's a way to, um, to nuke a result. Um, find the ith result and print it. Um, I think it's like sunrise, sunset, or something. Um, yeah, BC Rise Set is where I might do it, because I'm only looking for one of them. Um, um, compute the position, create a window. Um, I guess I don't wipe out result in that one. Because there's a way to, like, set card. Oh, it's S card, I think, is the magic word. Um, and that forces the result to go back to being uh, zero. However, I get the feeling this is not... This, I don't know if this is going to actually do anything, but I don't think it's going to help. Yeah, I don't see this as any faster than before. Uh, 
Uh, wow. Hard stop there at 1309. And again, so this, this is just at some point it's getting, I think it's just garbage collection. But, um, can't do that. so let me see if there's anything that I declare inside of the, um, now in theory, from what they've told me before, the lying bastards, doing this should not slow anything down. In other words, declaring a variable inside of a loop should not slow anything down. But what happens if I declare the variable outside the loop and and see if that speeds things up a little bit? Because that is that it does take some time, obviously, to do that. Um, not noticing much of a speed up there. Is that actually slower? Uh, yeah. Uh, so not not a hell of a speed up here. Uh, not not the kind of speed up I was hoping for. We will do this also with the uh, the other variables that we have. So I'm looking for like a ten times speed up, and this is not anywhere near that. Um, okay. So we also have here. All right, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we're almost back. And we're back. So let's see what else I'm declaring in here. Let's just see what happens if we don't declare J. And also beg and end can be declared before the loop. So here we're assigning, 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 looking for a max, a min rather, sorry, a condition. Okay, so here we should we're defining nothing inside the loop. And now watch it go. Yeah, not really significantly faster than before. And by the way, the word I was looking for earlier was profiling. We want to profile this program to see where the uh, where the where the uh, the runtime is spent. And I get the feeling this is all the red herring, and it's, uh, I think, is it CC Prof? Oh, uh, there's a C profile around here somewhere. Um, yeah, that's not interesting. <sighs> okay. So, assign, 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 um, what are we looking at here, the asteroid Ceres, so, yeah, I don't, I don't, this doesn't seem like it should be a problem, max wind size is 20,000. Now this is something that should not work. If we increase the max wind size, that'll just mean more memory, but I don't know if that'll actually, that shouldn't help run the program any faster. 
and it doesn't really appear to be. Okay. Um, and I'm rusty on how to profile the C program, so we will ask our good friend, Google Profile C Program. There's a very basic way of doing this. Oh, gprof. Um, <laughs> okay, I don't know if this has actually been compiled with... Oh, hang on. I think you can do this. And I think I'm wrong about that. Okay. Okay, let's try this gprof of this sucker. Yeah, and I and I and I've done I've used gprof before, uh, but I forget how. Give me one sec. I'm gonna see if I can find a really easy sort of way of doing this. Uh, no, I cannot. So, how to profile a program in C using gprof. Uh, da -da -da, get it. Before you use it, you have to make sure the program is executable. Um, okay. Oh. So if we put in the file minus the the flag minus pg, it will um, it will automatically profile. So let's take a look at this real quick. Um, okay. So I I get the feeling that has to be done at the compiler level. It's not something we can do from here. Um, and unfortunately, the make file here actually just calls a Perl script <laughs> um, called bc sudo make. And I think I can actually tweak that to make it with any options I want. Uh, do I have? Oh, wow. Um, Gmon out, not helpful. Well, 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 well. Okay. Um, so I guess I can tweak this program. I don't really want to necessarily do that, though. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and tweak BC sudo make. And I think I know how to do this without breaking too much shit. Okay. Uh, compile with minus minus pg. So that's, or actually minus pg in this case. Um, so pg flag if, if given as option. Um, And I guess it's typical in C to use c capital letters like this. Um, question mark? If it is not set, then it is nothing. Otherwise, it is minus, um, minus PG. And so then we can go down here and just say uh, PG flag. And so now, God willing, that hasn't broken anything that we were already doing, because then that would be, like, bad. Okay, and now... Um, it does have to be as BC sudo make. Uh, and I probably have to actually change this so it gets... I guess I could use force. Don't use that very often. Um, partly because it tries to recompile stuff that doesn't need to be recompiled. Yeah, this is why I don't do it. Um, there we go. And I don't think you can give this thing an argument. 
Um, did I at one point try to do that? Um, to do allow passing um, arguments to only recompile those arguments. So over here we just do a basic glob C. Um, and I guess, yeah, there's probably a way to just do that without doing that. But anyway, um, and now we'll be able to, we won't be able to look at Gmon data out because it doesn't mean anything. But um, we will have this slows down the program, I think running, so that's why you don't necessarily want to do it. <laughs> and now gmon.out is going to be in a form that we can't read it, but we maybe can read it. Alright. Um, and the gmon.out file may actually be here or it may not exist anywhere. The fuck, man? Oh shit, did I not save this? <laughs> I'm an idiot. Alright, one more time. And I guess I gotta go over here, do blah blah blah. Oh, I guess I could use the force command again. And I probably should not have piped it to less because it's going to take forever. Yeah, that was a mistake. So now if we do this, it may create a gmon.out file here or in the binary directory. And if it does, we might be able to use that to see what the hell is going on. Although at this point, I'm not really that sure. And it might also be just be the fact that um, at some point, there is a certain number of computations that have to occur, so this may not actually be that helpful. It, it may be that I am already perfectly optimized. And if it did create a gmon.out file, I have no idea where it is. Um, and I guess one thing I could have it do is actually print out what it's about to do. Let's see. Um, oh, it does actually do that if I do a debug. And did I actually say pg flag equal glob opts okay well let's do it with a debug uh, but this time we're not going to do a force but we are going to change just this one program so it does get recompiled compiled version is up to date and Okay, so we're not really seeing PG flag being set here, so hang on. Um, what's going on here? Oh. Yep, I'm a moron. There we go. Um, and now, God willing, we should get a gmon.out out file out of all this crap. And probably it's not going to tell us anything useful. I'm like 99% sure that it won't. And... 
So here we go. It is a little bit slower running with GProf, although I said that earlier when it wasn't running with GProf, so maybe I'm just imagining it. All right, solid. Here we go. And as you can see, the brilliantly completely useless information here, but if you run GProf on it, it should give you Um, ooh, that was actually sort of interesting. Okay, HR mint underscore, and this piece of shit. So this is great if I knew what the hell these were. Um, but actually, I think I think it'll tell you. Um, Explanation follows. I need to figure out what that, the hell that does. The problem is, I need this to be at a higher level. I need to know like wh how much each subroutine is called, and that might actually occur later in this. Um, In this later in this report, we might find out where we get the um, the cumulative total. Okay, so now maybe we'll get the uh, information we actually want, um, or not. No, we don't. Okay. So what we want. Okay, so right here, this is useful. So I think that is, that is, um, okay, so that is, that's where most of our time is going, is to the is decreasing function. Um, wait, really? That's not a hell of a function, though. And that's the only one that has... So I guess the children is the thing to be looking at here. Zero, 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 zero. Um, I get, I get this de de decreasing is apparently the uh, the bugaboo. Um, I don't know why though. That's not a very difficult function. And let's figure out what the hell H um, HR mint is. That sounds very exciting, actually. For my polynomial interpolation, um, okay. So apparently, it takes forever to uh, to actually interpolate something. And let me see what is decreasing. I know it takes a function as its argument. Um, So it's going to take GFQ as its argument. Um, and it's going to compute GFQ uh, one second before and after to see if it's increasing, which I guess can be a little bit tight. It's a very nice sort of is decreasing, sort of very nice um, um, it's a very simple, okay, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not that difficult. I think they have their own built-in is decreasing function that maybe is faster, that's sort of the null, uh, decreasing function. Let's see if we can find that. That might be a little bit faster. 
Okay. Um, and I think we might document it here. And int val stop just. Um, name of the routine that computes whether the scalar quantity is decreasing. And there should be a way to. Um, There should be a um, there should be a default version of this that does um, hopefully what I'm doing, but apparently much easier somehow. Um, so U D something. That's going to be under the use. Uh, here we are. U D F C dummy function. Um, expecting it okay. That's not quite what we want. Um, all right, so we do want a dummy function. That might be the only one, though. And that is does not apply, I think, to what we're doing. Pomodoro time, back in two and two. Okay, and we are almost back, and we are back. So the only thing I can think of here um, is just by going by one second on either side, that might not be, that might give us results that aren't very useful. So why don't we do this? Um, why don't we copy this function? We'll call it something different, obviously. So we don't want to redefine it. And here we'll just say, instead of this, we'll say um, 600 seconds on either side. And so maybe, maybe, maybe this will help. Um, So let's see if that works. Okay, it worked. Now let's see how fast it is. Mm, yeah, not really, not really thrilling us here with the speed. Um, yeah. Okay, actually, let's go ahead and do this again with BC pseudo make. Um, Yeah. So I get the feeling it's still going to get called a hell of a lot. Okay. Actually seems to be faster now that I'm profiling it. But that could be a trick. Uh, pew, pew.
This awkward silence is brought to you by... Okay. It's not really that awkward, but... So we do have a Gmon dot out that just got created. Um... So HR Mitt's still very huge, huge, being called very, very often. Um, seems like it's even more often than before. Kind of fuck that up. All right. So the only the only thing I was sort of worried about is that when this function gets called, um, if it gets the same value for both res one and res two you could sort of see where that would be uh, that would be sort of useless uh, so what we can do here is um, but if that's a really really small number uh, we know that this this is th this is not really giving us what we want it's giving us it's telling us one value is greater than the other even though they are technically um, they're pretty much equal to each other. So let's see what this does. Okay, so the diff actually is looking okay there. Ooh. That's what I don't want to be seeing. So when it's zero, I get the feeling it gets kind of stuck. Um... Mm-hmm. All right. Let's do this. Let's see which values show up the most frequently uh, in this um, when uh, this uh, is decreasing to function gets called. And if the top values or anywhere near the top values are zero, um, I think we'll have some evidence then that the function when it's called with zero it does return a definite result but the definite result is not is not useful uh, because <whistles> wow okay so that might be the problem most of the time it's returning zero uh, or negative zero um, But I guess we actually want to do something like this. Now I'm really suspicious of this. Um, uh, percent. Oh, come on. There's a definitely a way to do this that is like percent shift. Well, let's see if this is it, maybe. Nope, that's not what I wanted. It is percent zero fifteen f. I think is what I want. But let's find out. Nope, that's not it either. Is it percent point fifteen f? I'm just gonna keep doing this forever. Um. There we go. And now we should be able to see if the um, if the most frequent value is still zero, then it means we do have this this uh, program that tells you whether you're decreasing or not is not very accurate. However, if these values are all significantly different from zero or there's no super max value, we should be okay. Uh, so let's see what this does. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Okay. Zero is still the most frequent value, but that's not looking too bad, actually. Um, let's do it with something like um, Mars. Our nearest neighbor. Well, I actually think Venus might be closer at times, so I take that back. Yeah. 
Yeah, still getting a lot of zeros there, which is not great. Um, let's try it with Venus. Um, I guess the zero would occur when it's at a minimum, so that actually might be okay. Because if you go on either side of the minimum, uh, you increase equally much. So this, this actually might be okay. Um, and I get the feeling this is not going to go any faster than it did before. Oh yeah, if it won't, definitely won't do that if we keep printing this shit. Um, yeah, not r it's going a little bit faster, but not not really that much faster. Um. We could pare down this list of stars because we know that not all of them can be within um, a degree of, uh, within very close to, you know, to the ecliptic enough for Mars to, uh, to occult them. So 12 seconds for one year for one planet. And then what if we do, that's actually Venus, but um, Mars. Yeah, not 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 exactly what I'm looking for. Not not fantastic. Yeah, that's that's really too long for for a single year. Um, Yeah. Okay, so about 11 seconds, at least on this machine. Um, let me go ahead and try it on the other machine, because um, technically this is uh, remote-mounted, so that could be causing an issue. Um, so on this machine, I know you can't see what I'm doing. If it's a lot faster here, it might actually be... Whoa! Um, that's interesting. It should be able to figure out that, um, oh, hang on. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it the same parameters we gave it here. 399, well, 499, 2020, 2021. Uh, no, it's still pretty slow. It is not. It is not jumping into a a rapid speed loop of any sort here. In fact, it might be slower on this machine, which doesn't really make sense. Yeah, it's damn slower on this machine. Let me do a time on that. Um, eh. So the impossible is happening, and that is this appears to be actually slower on my real machine than on the VM. Of course, it is hosting the VM, so that does cause some issues in terms of of performance. Uh, but apparently, I didn't realize there were this this it was this bad. But apparently, it is this bad. It's only through star 700, about 2800 now. Um, of course, it'll be faster once the VM is off, but that's still very very long time. And um, honestly. Yeah, this is this is ugly. Sixteen hundred now. Seventeen hundred. Eighteen hundred. Nineteen hundred. This is going to take for freaking ever. I'm going to stop this thing actually, after over a minute. Of, of doing stuff. Okay, so this is this is not good. Um, and this apparently has nothing to do with it either. And honestly, I don't... I don't really see a way for this... Um,
I mean, interestingly, you would think that they could use something like the slope or use Newton's method here, uh, which they are not using apparently, or uh, because they are only using whether it's decreasing or not. Um, although, you, I mean, you can do pretty you can do pretty good job with that. Um, they're not using something like Newton's method to determine when the distance is minimal. Uh, the thought that I could maybe do better than this. Hmm. Now, there's sort of a temptation here to say, instead of using the arc sine, which does take a while to compute, um, whether we could just use the number itself, because the arc sine is very close to uh, being equal to the, uh, you know, arc sine of x is very close to x for small values of x. And the arc tangent would work here as well. They're all very close to each other. Okay, I'm gonna... This is something that I should not be doing. Yeah, this is gonna... All right. Okay, so I'm going to remind myself that I'm, I'm fucking this up. Wow, still not that much faster. Um. Oh, okay, that was a little bit fast. No, it wasn't actually. Um, well, let me make sure first of all that I actually did, did compile, and I'm not just using the um, the old version. I uh, know I did compile. Okay, so doing that didn't really help any. Um, we. Line below is experimental. Now the only weird thing here is we are um, we are redeclaring angsep each time. Um, so here we could just declare it here once and not redeclare it in the most used possible function. Um, we could, of course, also just not even use it as a as a variable. We could just return this by dividing by this thing uh, right away. But let's see if this speeds it up any. This is known as the grasping at straws method. Mm, yeah, not really going that much faster. It's going a little bit faster, but I might be imagining it. Um, so 11 seconds is sort of our uh, universal time, and this is 12.9. Yeah, it's not, it's not going any faster. Um, I, I get the feeling this is the, the problem is the is the Hermite interpolation takes forever, and there's nothing you're going to be able to do to fix that. I mean, realistically. Wait, did I see an error in Moon Occult Star? Okay, let's make sure we actually got that. I think that's fine. Yeah, not seeing that sort of super speed up I was hoping to see, and the G profiler has convinced me that it is the Hermite interpolation that is taking uh, forever uh, here. Yeah, and I don't think we're getting it any faster than this. Okay, we have now been going for uh, 10 seconds shy of two hours. So I think I'm going to patter for about another 10 seconds. Um, I mean, I think we've, we've kind of, we've done it, but it's much slower than we wanted it to be. We might be able to find something that's a little bit faster, but that's going to require... Um, 
maybe using Newton's method, maybe looking more at um, which stars are even feasible, so we can cut down on the list of stars. Um, and, you know, maybe use some sort of form of interpolation. I don't... Uh, that is not as bad as Hermite interpolation. Or maybe find an approximate solution uh, that gives us, you know, sort of a roughly where it could possibly happen, and then uh, look more carefully from there. Um, sort of a progressive, not a progressive, a, uh, I guess it is a progressive kind of a search. And then, of course, we could always move on to other crap, which we are behind on, uh, which I don't even know what some of these things are. All right, thank you for watching the stream, and I think that's it for tonight.